Welcome everyone, I'm uh, Lucio Bordonaro, Customer Service Specialist and Trainer at WebRatio. Today I'm going to show you the features of WebRatio BPM Platform 8.4. This is the um, webinar agenda. We will start from the business process modeling with a live sample, a live modeling sample. Then we will have a look at the business process engine with also a live execution, a live sample execution. Then we will have a look at the mobile BPM applications, also with a live sample. At the end of the webinar, uh, we will have five or 10 minutes dedicated to question and answer. So please, if you have questions during the webinar, write into the GoToMeeting chat. Okay. So, starting from the business process modeling, WebRatio BPM platform lets you create an application that is able to implement a business process, okay, defined in a WebRatio BPM platform, which is orchestrated by a BPM engine. The processes that are modeled in WebRatio BPM platform uh, use the actual standard which is BPM 2.0. In, uh, in a few hours, uh, we are going to publish an online training, an online tutorial, okay, which shows you how to create your first BPM process. I'm going to uh, model now a BPM uh, process, okay, a sample BPM process that manages the expense reports requests. It will have two actors, which are the employee and the supervisor. And uh, the employee is the one who makes the expense report request, while the supervisor decides whether to approve or not the request made by the employee. At the end of the process, if everything goes in the right way, the employee will receive a confirmation email okay, sent by the BPM engine. Okay, so I'm going to open WebRatio BPM platform and I'm going to create this new BPM process. So file new BPM project, I can give a name like uh, expense report sample, okay, then I press finish. And uh, as soon as the, pro the process ends, you will see the uh, default structure of a BPM process, okay, which has a start event, a generic user task, and an end event. I'm going to adapt this sample to the expense report uh, process. So the first thing that I do is just to rename the start process and the first task, which will be the fill expense task. I remove the end event, which for now it's not needed, and I re uh, rename the lane, okay, describing the first row, the first set of users that will participate in the process, which are the employees. Okay, so um, the field expense task will be the one used by the employee to create the first instance of the expense report request, okay? So it will provide the values of the amount spent and the personal email address, okay? Moreover, in order to manage structurally all of the data generated by the process, I'm going to use later, and we will see maybe when using the BPM uh, mobile application, I'm going to use uh, a remote expense object, okay? which is identified by a parameter that we will use inside the process, which is the remote key of the expense, okay? So for this task, I'm going to define some process parameters, okay? The first one that I create is the uh, amount of type decimal. Then I create a new one, which is the requester email parameter, which is a string. And then it creates another one, which is the remote key of type integer, okay? These are the four tasks that are required by the first uh, 
the first task, okay? Then what I have to do is to assign the parameters, the process parameter to this particular task. So I select all of them and I set all of them as required, okay? Then, uh, moreover, what we can do is to add a little bit of documentation to the task, okay? So you can uh, go into the user documentation and write something like uh, the template fills the expense report data uh, providing the amount, the email, and well, okay, and the email. Okay, so this is just a note that we can also use as the analyst note. So if you put here some comments, then you are able to show them into the model. Okay, we can also expand here in order to see all of the parameters, okay, which are used by this task. Okay, and after that the user fills the expense report, we are going to uh, log in as supervisor in order to approve the expense request, okay? So what I need to do here is to create a new lane, okay, for the process, which is the supervisor lane, okay? Inside this new lane, I'm going to put a new user task, which is the task to uh, review the expense, okay? So review expense task, okay? The supervisor will make a decision on the, uh, on the expense, okay? Which has been created by the employee. So I'm going to create a new process parameter, okay? Which is the supervisor decision that we can express as a Boolean parameter, okay? Perfect. Now I assign the uh, parameters to the review expense task. The amount, remote key, and requester email are just uh, are just selected while the, the supervisor decision is also a required parameter, okay? So I expand everything and then I connect the fill expense task with the review expense since this will be the next one to be executed, okay? Also here, if you want, you can add some comments and documentation. Okay, after here, after the uh, review expense made by the supervisor, um, there will be a gateway, okay, of type uh, exclusive, okay, that is based on the supervisor decision. So this is approve or reject expense, okay, the theme of the gateway and it will be immediately connected after the review expense task. If the uh, expense is approved, then it will go to refund. Otherwise, it will uh, go back to the fill expense task, okay? Um, so let's model, let's add the sequence flow that goes back to the fill expense. And let's add the new uh, service task that will refund the expense, okay? So, refund expense. Okay, this new task, we will define it later. We just need it in order to have the connection with the gateway, okay? Well, now that we have a gateway, we can define in, on the two paths that we designed, okay, the conditions to execute one or the other path. So let's select first this one, which goes back to the field expense task, okay? You have to define an, expre an expression, okay? So I create a new expression from here, saying that I will go back to the field expense task when the supervisor decision is equal to false, okay? And let's also say that this is the default behavior that I want to implement. Otherwise, if the, uh, if the supervisor decision is 
positive, then we will go to the refund expense service desk. Okay? So now we can uh, define the uh, refund expense parameters. Uh, we don't need other parameters since we defined everything that we need, so we can just assign the parameter to the task. Okay. Um, here we will use the amount, the requester email, and the supervisor decision. Okay. The service tasks that we defined, as you can see from the properties view, require an action definition. Okay, so we can immediately define the uh, the business logic that will be executed by this service task. Okay, so if you press here on action definition property, uh, it will ask you to create a new action definition. Okay, and it will bring it will it will bring you into the expense report sample web ratio project. Okay. So let's give a name to this uh, action definition, which can be refund expense. Okay. Basically, this, uh, uh, this action definition is empty, but it already has the input parameters and the output parameters that we defined on the service task. So you see here the amount, the requester email, and the supervisor decision. Okay. Um, Okay, so inside here we can put all the business logic that we want. Basically, I'm going to send the notice to to the uh, employee, so I will get the current date here, and I will prepare a mail to be sent here. Okay, so this is the mail notice. Okay, uh, I'm able to uh, define here. Also, uh, in order to send the email, the SMTP server. So if I don't have already one, I can define it from here. I have the create new SMTP server property. So I can put here web ratio SMTP. Uh, I create the SMTP with, the, with all the credentials. Uh, OK. Then I put the username, which is services task at web ratio dot com the password which is oh, this one okay okay and then the default from which is the default email address that will send the email okay once I have the SMTP defined I can say also that this email is going to be sent in HTML format so I'm able to specify a body template file, okay? In order to do it, I need to create here the web content folder, okay? And I've already prepared a template for this mail that now I'm going to put into the project, okay? So I just put it here, and then from the properties of the component, I just select this one and press on OK. It also has specific parameters, so you will see here all of the parameters required by the mail and other uh, and other uh, parameters that you can bind. So let's start with the current input date. Then I can put here a data flow, which passes all of the required data to the action. Sorry, to the mail to the mail operation. So the amount, the supervisor decision, the requester email. And from here, I can also set the subject, which is the expense notice mail. Okay? So in this way, when the process will execute the refund expense uh, service task, it will send a uh, notification by email to the employee. And at the end, we have the end event, which terminates the process instance. Okay? So, Basically, this is how you model a, a very simple BPM process, okay? Here it's made just of two lanes and three tasks, okay? And let's go back to 
to the slides since we are we are going to introduce now the BPM process engine. Okay. So uh, the BPM engine publishes a set of REST APIs to manage the process that we defined uh, a few seconds and a few minutes ago using the uh, BPM process editor, okay? And it autom automatically executes the business logic defined by means of action definitions like the one that we created and all the decisional points like the gateways, okay? The BPM engine also integrates a, frame, a framework, okay, which helps you to test and lets you use the REST APIs even if you don't have a dedicated front end to use, okay? The BPM engine is all based on Swagger. Okay, now we are going to have the live execution of the sample. Uh, I'm not going to use the one that I modeled here, but I've prepared one with more details, okay, which is the expense report process. So let me open the project and also the process. <clears throat> then from the project, you can press the generate and run on cloud button, and it will start the generation on the cloud server, on web ratio cloud server of the BPM process, okay? BPM engine, sorry. So what we are going to do now <clears throat> is to execute the flow of the process using the WebRatio Business Process Manager Engine API, okay? The first thing that I'm going to see, <clears throat> sorry, that I'm going to show you and that I'm going to do is to register the new users using this specific service, which is the user register service, okay? So I'm going to register one user for the employee lane and one for the supervisor lane, okay? So this is the employee user. I have the tryout button, okay? That executes the request and shows the response into the, uh, directly into the, the browser, okay? I have to take note of the OIDs. I have already prepared this file that I will use just to write down the meaningful information. Then I create the supervisor, okay, with OID number nine. And then the next step is to log in as administrator of the process in order to assign each user to the dedicated lane, okay? There is one user which is a built-in user, which is the admin admin user, okay? That's, uh, okay, so here there is problem with the user's login. Uh, it doesn't let me uh, log in as the administrator, so let me check on the uh, user tables of, of the BPM process. Okay, so let me create one here. Let's do like this. Let's create a new user from here with credentials admin. Admin. It should be a built-in users, but from somehow it doesn't show up automatically. So uh, now I have the user. Let me bind it to the uh, role, which is process administrator. So this is the user number 10. So I'm going to write here 10 and role ID 1. Okay, so I'm sorry, this, this should not happen uh, when you run the first process. Now it should let us log in as administrators, okay? So we copy the token of the administrator. We will use it later in order to update the uh, users and assign the users to the dedicated lanes. So I'm going to use this service, which is the user's user ID service, which performs a user update, okay? Here I put the administrator token and the user ID that I want to change first, which is the employee, okay? So user ID eight. Here is the body of the request that I have to execute. So I'm just basically changing the role of the user. So 
for the employee. Let's put here employee as role. Okay, it assigns here the role. Then I change the user ID, I use the number nine, which is the supervisor, and I assign it to the supervisor lane. Okay, perfect. Now let's uh, let's make the login as employee. Okay, so I put here amp as username and pass as password. Okay, the login is successful and I can take note of the token of this user, the authorization token. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is to start the process of the expense report request. Okay, the first thing that I will do is to get the process definition for this user, okay, for the employee user. Okay, so here I can have a look at the process which I'm running, which is the expense report process, and the, the next, uh, sorry, and the uh, start event for this user, which is the start uh, event, okay, named start that I created in the process. So I, I take down as note the name of the process and the name of the start event, and the next thing that I'm going to do is to perform the start process Okay, using the processes service. So I put here once again the authorization token of the user, uh, and I uh, make the request in order to start the process name expense report. Okay, using the event name start. Okay. This is the first task that I'm able to execute, which is the fill expense task, okay, which has OID number 47. So I'm going to put this OID here. And the next thing that I'm going to do is to update the status of that task. Okay, so I go into the task services and I use the tasks task ID uh, service. I always need the authorization token for the employee, so let's put it here. The task ID is 47, and the action that I want to do, first of all, is just to claim that task. So I take in charge of that task. So then I try the execution, and as you can see, now the status of this task is active, so we are able to work on it. And here we have the parameters, which are amount, request for email, and remote key, okay? So now what we, uh, what we can do is to complete this task. I've already prepared the whole JSON to send, okay? Creating uh, an expense of, with, with this amount and with this request for email, okay? Which is connected to the remote key number one, okay? So I tried the execution. The response is uh, is just the code, so everything went okay. Task successfully claimed or completed. So at this point, since the employee completed the task, we can uh, we can have a, a look at the expense report. So now we should log in as supervisor, and we should find a, a task to be reviewed. Okay, so what I do now is to go back to the user services and perform the login as supervisor. Okay, I take note of the token for the supervisor, which I put directly here. And the first thing that I do now is to claim the uh, sorry, not to claim the task. Before claiming the task, I want to show you at which step of the process we are. So I've said that we should be here with a task ready to be working, which is the review expense. So what I do now is to make the request for the diagram image. The diagram image is an image, a dynamic image, which shows you the current uh, execution of the process, okay? So I have to put the authorization token of the supervisor here, and then I can just 
retrieve the process ID from, well, let's retrieve it from directly from the database. Otherwise, you can just make a call to the dedicated service. Okay, this is process number 16. So I go here and I put as process ID the number 16. Okay, it generates all of the information of the process, okay, with the review expense in status, which is ready, okay. I copy the diagram ID information and I go to the file services, okay, ready to download this file ID. So I put here the file ID, then I need once again the supervisor token as authorization. Okay, and as you can see here, it shows the review expense in, re in a ready status, okay? This will be uh, available, this diagram image, in every step of the process, and you can, and you have to request it every time that you want to show it, okay? So now, let's go on with the process. So, after the diagram image, let's get the uh, the list of the tasks, okay, that we that we want to execute as a supervisor. The next one is the 48, which is the review expense, okay. So I'm going into the task services, okay, and execute the task number 48 with the supervisor token as authorization. And here, what I want to do is just to claim this task, okay. I put action claim as parameter. I get back the information and all the parameters. And now, after claiming the task, I'm able to complete it. So also here, I prepared the JSON file. Okay. Uh, I make the request. And now the process is complete. Okay. Since this is the last task that the user are able to execute. Uh, we can ask once again for the uh, diagram image in order to know at which step of the process uh, we currently at. So I generate once again, it shows a different diagram uh, ID. So I go back here and I generate the new diagram image. So as you see, we filled the expense, the supervisor approved the expense, and now it is uh, it is sending the refund expense email, okay? So in a few seconds, I should receive that email from the BPM engine, okay? In the meanwhile that this task gets, uh, gets executed, let's have a look at the mobile BPM applications, okay? So, with the uh, with web ratio BPM platform, you are able to define the process and you are able to generate the BPM engine. Okay, with web ratio mobile platform, instead you are able to model mobile applications that are able to run or to execute the processes that you define with the web ratio BPM platform. Okay, so basically what you can do is to create a mobile front end using IFML and the default set of view components and operation so you don't you don't have to learn anything new from the mobile application point of view in order to connect to the BPM engine and execute a BPM process. I've already prepared a BPM uh, based mobile application for you. Okay, I have it here. I'm going to show you the model uh, very quickly and then we will run the sample. So basically I have the login screen here which asks for the username and password. Uh, the login authentication is performed uh, both on the backend that we use to manage structurally the information of the expense report and on the BPM engine, okay? Then it redirects the user according to his role okay, to, to the lane to which he belongs to, to the employee screen sets or to the supervisor screen set. The employee uh, screen set contains the My Expense page, okay, with a list of expense reports. 
uh, that he created, he is able to create a new one. So he will start the process and claim the field expense uh, task, okay, which is basically a form that shows the fields for the employee, okay. Then he will complete the expense and have here the status, the updated status of the expense reports. After that, we will do the login as supervisor. So we will have a list of activities this time. Okay, so we will claim one of the activities, uh, which is the review expense task. Okay, we will put the supervisor decision here. And after that, we are going to complete the expense. Okay, right now, this model is done with the explicit calls to the BPM engine, but uh, later on, the, the, uh, there will be a strict collaboration between the, between the WebRatio BPM platform and the WebRatio mobile platform. Okay, so right now I'm going to generate and run the mobile application. Uh, in the meanwhile, that the mobile application gets generated, let's have an updated uh, information about the process that we run previously. So let's see if the if the email was sent successfully. Okay, approve the expense. It sent the email. So in a few minutes, I will show you also the mail notice of that process. This is instead the mobile BPM application. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to open the emulator, the web emulator. Let's give a little bit of time in order to set up everything. Okay. So I open up the emulator here. We should see in a few seconds the login screen for uh, for the application. Okay. As usually, well, it requires a little bit of setup. So let's wait some other seconds. Still not loading. Okay. So we put here the username of the employee. Okay. We perform the login authentication. Okay. And this is the, uh, the home screen of the employee screen set. So I start here the new expense process. Here I have the same comments that I put into the BPM process, okay? So you can also use that into the mobile application. Uh, let's type an amount, okay? And the request for email, I put my personal email address here, okay? If I press on save, it saves the expense report locally and on the backend. So that when I perform the logout and log in once again as supervisor, I will be able to take charge of the tasks. Okay, so you see here that there is the review expense task which is ready to be executed. Okay, with the details that we put previously. Uh, I decide to approve, okay, this, uh, this request. So when I press on save, it shows an empty list of tasks and it completes the process, okay? So now in a few uh, seconds, I will receive also this email, okay? So I'm going to open the, uh, the email just to show you the content of the notice mail, okay? So this is the one that we uh, generated from the BPM process, okay? The one, uh, the one uh, that we executed from the BPM engine, sorry, okay? Which was uh, uh, with this amount and with the supervisor decision and the date. Now I received the new message, which is the new mail notice, so I just open here and you see the new amount and the new expense which is approved okay so uh basically this is everything that i wanted to show you in this webinar uh before having the question and answer uh 
uh, minutes. Let me remind you our contacts, okay? And moreover, let me remind you that in the that tomorrow you uh, will receive an evaluation survey for the webinar, okay? That I kindly ask to fill. So uh, thank you for attending this first part. Now we can have five or ten minutes for a question and answer. So keep writing into the go to meeting question and then I will answer. Okay, so I received two questions uh, till now, okay. Um, the first one is why you put the supervisor decision parameter into the refund expense task. So this is related to the expense report uh, uh, process. Well, I decided to put here the supervisor decision just to give a feedback into the into the email okay this is just a sample process i know that it is always true but you can use this information to give a notice to the employee at the end of the process otherwise you can just use this information to trigger other logic inside that refund expense task okay this is was this was just me meant to be a very sample and simple, let me say, BPM process. Okay. Um, another question is how the mobile project exploits the BPM engine? Is the mobile project an independent project or is it linked to the BPM? Okay, this is a good question. As I uh, said, but I said it very fast, I know this, um, the BPM process and the BPM engine is one thing, okay? You do the BPM process into WebRatio BPM platform, okay? So the BPM platform is just to define the business process, okay? Then you can open the uh, mobile platform and create a standalone mobile project, okay? That just uses <clears throat> the REST API services <clears throat> sorry, which are published by the BPM engine, okay? So <clears throat> at the moment, there is no uh, connection, there is no physical connection between the two projects. In the, uh, in the next release, maybe there will be something more, uh, let's say, more strict from this point of view. Okay. <clears throat> Another, uh, another question is, what about the designs in the mobile application? Are they standard? Is it possible to change them? Of course you can, of course you can, because when you model the mobile application, you work inside WebRatio mobile platform, okay? So the mobile application is a standard mobile platform, uh, it's a mobile application, sorry. So you can do everything that, uh, that you can do with there are mobile applications in uh, in web ratio so you are able uh, you are able to change the style define new designs uh, define new components whatever you want to do okay okay then another question is the ability to model a service task logic in BPM project is a characteristic of the new version or can be used also in older versions. Well, this is the new version. So everything that I'm showing is related to WebRatio BPM platform 8.4, okay? So starting from this new version. Uh, in WebRatio, I think you refer to WebRatio 7 
uh, or the older BPM version, well, you you cannot do it. Okay, it's a uh, it's something new that we introduced with Web Ratio BPM platform 8.4. Okay. Then I have other questions related to the BPM engine that I will detail that I will detail with uh, personal emails. Okay, so you will receive the answer with personal emails. Uh, 